All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. At this time, I would like to call our March 19th Planning Commission meeting to order. Uh, just as a reminder, please silence all cell phones. Amber, you roll call. Dan Bennett. Here. Here. Robin Bridges. Phil Chancellor. Mac Lazenby. Here. Marcus Marshall. Here. Warren McCord. Johnette Reese. Bob Breitenbach. Here. Okay, at this time, I would like to take a, a, a quick break and let Tyler Caldwell speak to this item, uh, some issues this evening. Well, sure. I just wanted to announce <clears throat> both to the commission and, and to the public that we're, we're missing a couple commissioners today. We're missing our chair and our vice chair. Uh, and in their absence, uh, Mr. Bledsoe is going to run the meeting uh, for the commission as our secretary. So I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Before I start, I would like to give a brief overview of the process for this public meeting of the City Auburn Planning Commission. We, we will be presented with agenda items by our planning department. An authorized case representative will also have an opportunity to present as well as answer specific questions both before and after the public hearing. We will then open a public hearing and this is the opportunity for you to speak about this issue. Our goal tonight is a fair hearing. We want everyone to be duly heard. We invite you to ask questions and speak your mind. Please ensure that you keep your time to, time to talk uh, at a five limit five minute limit and keep your dis discussions and comments relevant to the actual case at hand. After everyone has spoken, we will close the public hearing. The representative will then have an opportunity to answer any questions and respond to the hearings, discussions, and then we open the commissions for questions and comments. And then the commission will make a decision We'll make our decision based on our zoning laws, our comprehensive plan 2030, and the good of the community in a fair and impartial way. At this time, if it will be time for citizens' communications. If there is someone here that would like to address the commission about anything not on tonight's regular agenda, if so, please come forward. All right. Seeing no one, now for the consent agenda. Our consent agenda consists of only the packet meeting February 11th and regular meeting minutes from February 14th and three items. Mr. Call, will you, will you present? Certainly, thank you. As you mentioned, there are three items tonight on the consent agenda. The first two are annexations and the third is a final plat. This first item is, uh, an annexation uh, request from the Pitts family uh, for 1.06 acres along Moores Mill Road on the south side of town, about 1,400 feet past Society Hill Road. There's a single family dwelling on the property and it would be annexed as rural when it comes in. Staff recommends approval in that it is within the optimal boundary per the comp plan 2030. See an aerial of the property. It's worthy to note that the property to the north uh, is a large tract of land that has been gifted to the city that is going to be a, uh, a municipal park, uh, and that's part of the Parks, Recreation, and Culture Master Plan, uh, if you're interested. The second case is an annexation of the same acreage, 1.06 <coughs> acres, on the north side of town on North Donahue Drive. The property owner is uh, Donahue Land LLC, and it was conveyed to us that the intent of the annexation of this uh, long sliver of property would be in a, in a uh, land swap with the adjacent property to the west, Weber Farms, Lot 1. Staff recommends approval of this uh, as it's within the optimal boundary. See an exhibit <clears throat> of the property to be annexed. The property to which that is to be uh, joined with is up for final plat. So they're on North Donahue Drive. Um, property owner is Broadview Properties and they have uh, submitted for final plat. The preliminary plat was adopted in February of 2018 
and it is for a 55 lot single family detached subdivision. Um, there are staff comments that are notational that need to be met prior to signing as well as either bonding or in completing the road infrastructure and other uh, the stormwater sewer um, infrastructure as well. That staff recommends approval of the consent agenda uh, as presented. Okay, commissioners, questions. do you have any questions or discussion? Uh, I'd move on the approval of the consent agenda, which includes the two annexations and the uh, final plat approval as discussed, plus the packet meeting minutes of February the 11th and the regular meeting of February the 14th. Second. Okay. I have a second and a, mo a motion and a second. <clears throat> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Consent agenda is approved. Okay. We'll move to new business. And um, item number four, Camden West Preliminary Plat. Mr. Howell will present. Good evening. First uh, case before you tonight is a preliminary plat application for approximately 111 acres in the northwest of Auburn. It's in the DDH zoning district, bordering the existing Camden Ridge development to its northeast. You have Mrs. James Road at the intersection with Donahue north of it. The area was rezoned from uh, in different sections rezoned from rural and CDD in 2006 to DDH to uh, as lo along with much of Camden Ridge, portions of Camden Ridge also. Here is the northern section of the proposed layout. As you, if you can see on the, uh, on the, the map, you have your, your inset here that gives you the dividing line between it. So and the, as you're looking at these lots right here, north is facing to your left. These lots, uh, out, of the entire, out of the entire subdivision, it consists of 189 lots, four of which are green space requirements, since this is a performance residential uh, application. Three of those lots here, here, and here are represented in this, in this sheet. And then the second sheet, you have another here and here. There's a bit of a difference between the, the, two di uh, the two sections of lots, what you have in the north and what you have in the south. Overall, the gross density of the subdivision is approximately 1.65 dwelling units an acre. That's, uh, that's well below the performance DDH limit of 5.5. It's worth noting that because they're, they are very different um, sections, that the northern section you have about quarter acre lots which um, are about half the size of the Camden Ridge properties to their to their east and then the southern southern uh, lots are roughly equivalent to the Camden Ridge properties about a half acre each And here's just a quick layout how it would look inside the, uh, inside the zoning district as you see it right there. You have the northern lots here, stub out to their west, followed by the southern lots here, stub outs again to the property line per the, per the city of Auburn uh, subdivision regulation. Staff is recommending approval with comment. There's a, a few things that the applicant needs to address. Uh, first of all, there's, uh, there's a requirement for performance, uh, performance residential lots in the DDH to provide 30% of their acreage for, uh, for open space. They have provided uh, roughly 27%, so they're about three acres short, a little over three acres short. Also, um, there's a requirement for all open space in the city that's provided to be within 750, excuse me, all residences have to be within 750 feet. And there's about 13 lots in the center of this portion down here that 
don't meet that requirement, so they'll have to address that. Additionally, as a uh, performance, as a performance sub subdivision abutting a conventional subdivision as well as vacant area around it, there's a 10-foot buffer requirement that they'll have to meet around the, around the sides of the subdivision. And lastly, uh, pedestrian access is being uh, recommended for lots that do not have public frontage. So this one up here in the north, and then particularly this one here in the south, the largest of the one, of the, uh, the open space. And this lot next to, uh, that, it, that adjoins the subdivision is a planned bike lane, which you see in this, in this, which you see in this exhibit. So it's outside of the subdivision, however, it runs adjacent to the length of that open space. So staff is re also recommending provide, allowing pedestrian access through that, uh, through that lot into the planned greenway there. I've received uh, only a couple of phone calls. One was uh, from a adjoining property owner uh, looking for information, and the second was the uh, Homeowners Association president of Cannon Ridge also looking for information. And uh, that is that concludes the uh, staff comments. So pending any of your questions. All right, thank you, Mr. Howe. Uh, authorized representative, Mr. Blake Rice, would you like to speak, sir? Be happy to answer any questions. Okay. <clears throat> this item uh, agenda does uh, have a public hearing. Uh, I will open up the public hearing. Would anybody like to come to address the commission or have any questions re regarding this item? Please come up. Remember to sign in and state your name and your address. Good evening. I'm uh, Dr. Robert Mann. My doctorate's in emergency management. And in lieu of what we faced last week in Lee County, I would ask that the builders consider uh, in placing storm shelters in every single one of the houses that they're going to build. I realize that immediately people think, well, the cost is too much. And not only would the cost be too much, but it would also take a couple extra days to build each house and that building the houses in and getting out is what the builders want. However, if they do a cost analysis of it, they'll find that by spending approximately twelve to $1,500 in supplies to build this storm shelter into each house, they'll be able to add $10,000 value to each house because there's not a single individual that I know of who would not pay an extra $10,000 on a mortgage to purchase a house that already has a storm shelter in it, especially after what happened on Sunday the 3rd. The other thing I would ask is that if the uh, council recommends that they complete the planning with the extra three acres that they put in a dog park when they build. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Would anyone else like to speak to this item? Okay. Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. <clears throat> Do we have any discussions from the commissioners? No, excuse me. Would the representative like to speak before discussion? Just be happy to answer any commission questions. I don't think we have the authority to 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 require. It's, it's not a bad idea, but I don't think we have the authority to require that. Is that isn't that the case, Tyler? That's correct. I'm not asking it to be required. I'm just asking. And I will be happy to provide the builder with this information. Um, and. Uh, Dr. Mann, my information can be found from any of the city staff. Feel free um, for anybody to give it to you, and I'd love to see any information you have, and I'd be happy to pass that along. Same thing with the Thank dog you, right. All right, commissioners, we have uh, any more discussion for a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, approve a PC case. Uh, 2019-00108 Camden West Preliminary Platt with all staff comments. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we'll go to item agenda number five, Auburn Links Crossing Subdivision Phase Preliminary Platt, Phase Three Preliminary Platt. Uh, Ms. Robeson, please yes, present. Yes. Sure. Good evening. 
Uh, this is a request from Lynx Crossing LLC for preliminary plat approval for 28 lot subdivision phase three of Auburn Lynx Crossing. The property is zone DDH and is just west of phase two. Um, the um, property consists of 27 residential lots and one open space lot. Um, the average lot size of the residential lots are about a third of an acre. The density for the phase is 2.69 dwelling units an acre where the uh, maximum allowed is four dwelling units an acre in DDH for conventional subdivisions. Uh, we did not receive any correspondence for this case. We do uh, recommend approval with staff comments and I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. All right, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Ms. Robeson. Mm -hmm. um, is authorized representative Mr. Nettles here? All right, thank you. You'd like to speak, sir? Uh, I'd be glad to answer your questions. Okay. This item does require a public hearing, and I will open the public hearing at this time if anybody would, if anybody would like to speak to this item. State your name and your address, and please sign in. I'm if you uh, have it. already signed in. Uh, retired Colonel Mark McGuire uh, from U.S. Army. I work at the VA, just retired again from there. But for history purposes, I live in, in Magnolia Gardens, which is right beside Auburn Link's uh, golf course. We moved in there in 2004. Uh, we've been there the whole time. Our issue is not so much the development of the land, because I think it's probably going to improve all of our housing values. My issue is Mill Creek Road has become a speedway. There's going to have to be something done along that road. We've called to the, to, the, to the commission two or three times to get the road fixed, and they have done that. We appreciate that. But right now, if you were to send a policeman over there every day, he'd have a quota. Because you've got people cutting through the Beehive Road. And then, of course, when we first moved in, we have 20 units in our area. And, of course, as time went on, the only person across the street was Dr. Mitchell. Okay? And then along came, you know, other developments. Mr. Haley developed some. And then, of course, now you've got Parkerson Mill, which is on the other end. So what you've created, okay, and I don't know exactly where the county and the city line crosses down there, if it goes all the way to Beehive or not. But you've got two, um, you've, you've got two daycare centers down there. And one of these days, something bad's going to happen on that road, okay? And the same thing at the top of the hill you know, where we've now got shell tumor and we have the development across the street and the majority of the people that are going into both of those places, they don't live here. They don't know where to turn in. There's no signs. And I think there's always been some discussion who really owns the land. Is it the city? Is it the state? Or who? So you've got portions of shell tumor that is a problem as well. So my issue is really more safety. I mean, look at what happened at the corner of uh, Wright's Mill and uh, an Ogletree. When they put in that four-way stop, made a big difference in that little neighborhood, okay? Because we go that way all the time over to Moore's Mill Club. You could do the very same thing on Mill Creek somewhere. You could put a little four-way stop down there or put in some sort of speed bumps. So the development itself is great. The problem I'm having, okay, is trying to turn out of my road to go to, go to town. So that's my comments. My wife probably has some more. <clears throat> no, it's the same thing. It's, it's a safety concern. That's all. And but, but we we have to have the development. It's a safety concern. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. And um, Mr. Nettles, would you like to speak to the commission? Uh, addressing uh, what his comments were is a valid concern, you know, and and I'm sure that that's something that um, I can guarantee that Allison and her staff is probably all about that. I can guarantee that. So they will dictate, you know, how we need to do things and add things. And it's not a bad idea personally if you wanted to do a, a full way stop right there. But um, that'd be out of my hands, you know. But, um, but like I say, I. 
I got confidence in them to be able to to handle that. And now that, especially now that you've mentioned it, I'm pretty sure they'll probably be studying that scenario anyway. So, but um, I just wanted to address that. But any other comments, Allison? Any any mm -hmm. comments about that? Yeah, I, was trying to find I don't think I did. Did I? You did not. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't think I close a public hearing. I'd like to close a public hearing at this time. I'm sorry. Thank you. And any discussion from the commissioners or a motion? I move we we approve PL two zero one nine zero zero one zero with all staff comments. Okay. We have a second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Six. Next item agenda six is Miracle Row right of way plenary, preliminary plat. Mr. Caldwell, you present. So, uh, this preliminary plat is, is, or this case is going to be one of two that are uh, a preliminary and a final plat for the same piece of property. Um, this is the, what came in originally as the Burt property PDD, now referred to as Woodward Oaks, uh, is going to develop over, over the next couple of years, um, that property there in the middle, the DDH and PDD property. Part of their development plan is to relocate Miracle Road and straighten Miracle Road but maintain Miracle Road as a, as a connection from Farmville to North Donahue. <coughs> this would be the preliminary plat, and, and as you can see down towards the bottom right corner, the only change that would be happening to the properties is the vacation of the existing uh, bulb of Miracle Road as it uh, goes to the west to be dedicated a straight connection of Miracle Road and to replace that that turn. Um, staff has been working with the applicant. Um, the applicant is uh, Harris Doyle Homes, the developer of the Woodward Oaks development, and been working with them on the timing um, of their development as well as the vacation, the construction, and the dedication of the new right-of-way. Um, and so staff, staff feel confident that uh, this plat is in good shape and, and is ready to proceed and recommend approval. Are there any comments from the commission? No. All right. Um, <clears throat> authorized representative, uh, are they here to represent? Mr. Caleb? Yeah. Would like yeah, to say. Thank you. All right. Um, this does require a public hearing. And I will open up the public hearing at this time if anybody would like to speak to this item. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. And any discussion from commissioners? Yeah, just a, just a quick comment. You know, several months ago, the, the, there was a big issue about Miracle Road, about the access. I think this really kind of solves that problem that, uh, that some of the neighbors had. Uh, with regard to what the access would be. But I think this would keep them from even having to go through the subdivision. So it sounds like a really positive kind of response to that issue. So very much in favor of it. I can make a motion, sure. Uh, recommend we um, approve PL 2019-00111, Miracle Road right of way with all staff comments. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We move to item number seven, Milka Road, right away, final plat. Mr. This, Caldwell. This doesn't happen often, but in the instances where uh, a plat is fairly simple and, and uh, has been packaged together and is, is uh, easy to review, we, we take the preliminary and the final together at the same time. To expand a little bit on uh, what Mr. Bennett referred to was the original master plan for this property did remove the southern portion of Miracle Road and have all of the neighborhood activity go through the Woodward Oaks subdivision. And this would negate that necessity. So I agree. I do think that is a, a, a successful change. Um, 
staff's available for any questions. Um, okay. All right. There is no public hearing for the final plat. So do we have any any discussions from the commissioners or a motion? Move to approve item seven with staff comments. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next on the agenda is item number eight, West Veterans Apartments. Mr. Caldwell. All right. Well, the what's before you is a conditional use application for a multifamily development on Long West Veterans Parkway. Uh, this is just slightly west of South College, behind the commercial strip center uh, along South College and east of the industrial development. Um, Tech Park North. Um, there is um, on the north side of West Veterans uh, approximately 50 acres of undeveloped property zoned CDD. The, it's owned by the Phillips Family Partnership and they're, ha they're attempted to sell it off and the developer is here representing the multifamily development at 406 West Veterans. The, the lot that's in question is approximately 25 acres and the developer is proposing um, a 240 unit um, market rate housing product. It meets the density um, and the staff did make some comments about open space and buffer yard requirements but there appears to be ample land to satisfy that. Um, as far as comments go there were a couple of comments that were talked about it Monday at packet meeting um, and that would be the connection to Downs Way that would be required um, to fulfill the the city's master street plan as well as connectivity to the west and then um, a greenway easement to the north along Parkerson Creek Mill uh, Parkerson Mill Creek excuse me um, here we have the aerial for the property and as you can see uh, this is not dissimilar than how it looks today in that uh, from the retail along South College to the industrial development to the west, uh, the property has uh, been left undeveloped. I had several conversations with uh, the developers' representatives this week um, after the packet meeting in an attempt to uh, understand the requirements from staff as far as the connectivity and, and what would be necessitated. Um, and the developer submitted a site plan, which they may show you later. We did not include it in our presentation. It wasn't presented with the packet. And in typical fashion, we like to uh, not to surprise you with anything at the meeting and uh, let you review what was submitted with the packet. Um, it's worth mentioning the future land use of the property is master plan mixed use. Um, we see that land use designation um, off of the commercial along so South College from this point all the way up to uh, Suge Jordan Parkway for any property that is uh, inside the city limits and undeveloped uh, has that master plan mixed use designation. With that, staff recommends approval. Um, and are available for any questions. All right, thank you, Mr. Caldwell. Um, applicant, Mr. Mando, Josh Mando here. Uh, yes, sir. Would like to speak this time? I got it on the yeah. desktop. If you, want it, you want it up? Uh, if, it's, if it's okay with you all, uh, I'd we did revise it subject to uh, comments in the in the staff meeting and the packet meeting. So, uh, basically, the main change being moving one of the buildings to achieve fifty percent frontage on West Veterans. Okay.
Okay, oh. there it is. Uh, so as I was mentioning, uh, good evening. Uh, as I was mentioning, uh, we made a couple of slight changes uh, in this second site plan to address some comments that were made in the staff meeting. Uh, but just to be brief, uh, this development uh, is, this plan would be a, a 240 unit Class A conventional multifamily development. Uh, we'll have premium uh, interior finishes, uh, high quality exteriors, it'll be all brick and hardy. Um, We'll have a good mix of, of floor plans, primarily one and two bedroom units. Um, and then we'll be fully amenitized. So uh, a very attractive uh, high-end clubhouse, uh, fitness center. We'll have a dog park with dog wash, cyber cafe, uh, a, a pleasant gathering space for our residents. Um, and this, we're, we're doing this um, with some, uh, we're doing this with some appeal to the, uh, the city's um, market study that was finished la late last September uh, that was updated. Uh, we, we, saw, we see a lot of, um, we see the, the need that was mentioned in the market study. Um, and we've, we're, we're relying on and using uh, the Pucciano uh, Interior Design Studio out of Atlanta, which has a great reputation for attractive, well-built, well-laid-out uh, uh, communities. That's it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, this uh, item does require a public hearing. Uh, I will open up the public hearing if anybody would, uh, would like to address the commissions or have any questions. Megan McGowan Crouch, and I'm here representing the Industrial Development Board of the City of Auburn. I'm the Assistant Secretary Treasurer. Um, I also serve as the City's Executive Director of Development Services, but the Industrial Development Board had a long partnership with the Phillips family uh, of where um, the Phillips family allowed a road to be built through their property um, to help access the industrial park and we've had a long partnership and there are certainly no issues with this development from the Industrial Development Board's perspective but it likes to go on the record when residential developments are getting very close to industrial property just to go on the record saying that the park is a 24 hour a day manufacturing park Trucks run up and down West Veterans Boulevard. Um, sometimes some scrap gets dumped in the middle of the night. We try to keep noise down, but it does happen. And so the, the board always likes to go on record as saying we have an active industrial park with many trucks and shift change and all the things that happen in an industrial park close to a new residential development. But that's it. There are no objections to the development. Okay, thank you. Okay, anyone else? Mark McGuire again. Um, our question basically between my wife and I is just how many more apartments and how many other developments do we really need in Auburn? How are you going to keep South College open? It's detoured today. So how are you going to have all that infrastructure to be able to do stuff? I talked about my little road of where I'm at. Jiminy, you know, South College is, you know, is not going to be able to maintain that traffic. So I think there needs to be some forward thinking a little bit here about how many do we really need. I think the project probably sounds great, but are we thinking forward 15, 20 years from now? Are we going to have 40,000 students at Auburn University? I don't know. But how are they going to get back and forward? How many Tiger Transit trucks and you know, buses can go up and down South College? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. McGuire. Anyone else? question it may just be my vision um, Haley 1695 East University Drive we're an adjacent property owner through Tiger Crossing and Alabama General Partners where is Downs Way going to come in is that shown is that on the I, I heard him say that but I was hoping to see is there a drawing if it's coming through this down Downs Way uh, you can see is right here right and if I recall I believe that we have plans from engineering that have it being placed right well, roughly, no. roughly east of the center. How does it fit with the project? So the well, it, it doesn't. <laughs> right. The revision Tyler mentioned, they submitted, uh, showed it to the east. This is the revision. So right there, that's at the right of way. Well, it's about 500 feet east of where our street line shows mm -hmm. it. And I'm all for it. Don't get me wrong. I'm just trying to understand. It will be running 
just to the north of Parkinson's Mill Creek? Well, the, the applicant submitted this on Tuesday which we really haven't had a chance to review, and in a very, very, very short, compressed time, staff saw that it was about 500 feet away from where it probably should be. Right, but, but that general area. No, 500 feet west of that. Well, that's, so yeah, like that's here. In 25 acres, that's the same general area, so. <laughs> yeah. I'm fine with that, and that, may, that will help a lot with the uh, ingress and egress that flows. This will flow back to Cox Road in a number of ways. There'll be, a dozen different ways to get in and out of here without having to go to South College, but that's that's great planning. And I know we're fixing to bring uh, this summer Downs Way to their property line or thereabouts. That's been approved and all that, but I just kind of wanted to make sure we're all lining up the same way. Yeah, it's in staff. Staff will definitely want to review all the plans to make sure that that those alignments yeah, happen. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Haley. <clears throat> Would anyone else like to come up for the public hearing? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. And Mr. Mano, would you like to come address some of those? Yes, sir. I will. Thank you. So I'll be brief just to address the, uh, the two questions about one um, uh, overall apartment, uh, apartment volume, apartment development. Uh, what we wanted to emphasize was that this is a conventional uh, community um, that again we we were we were reviewing and, and really grasping uh, the market study that the city commissioned uh, that was updated last year and for conventional market rate units the vacancy rate is like 1.5 percent and so that to us is a very uh, that's that's a very unusual number um, and and that is what is to us reflecting um, reflecting a solid uh, multifamily uh, uh, volume and then the second uh, the second question about Downs Way is um, yeah, uh, yes our, our apologies to you Tyler we uh, we're trying to respond quickly but uh, we recognize that that will be uh, a matter that needs to get uh, completely reconciled. Uh, that's all. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Commissioners, any discussion for motion? Yes. This is a relatively large <coughs> development on this section of road for this parcel of property that's under one ownership, and uh, and it doesn't totally conform with our comprehensive land use plan, and that is master plan multi-use and this is uh, not multi-use and with the property under one ownership it would be ideal i guess to be able to see what else may be planned on this side or at least to plan something so we could coordinate uh, the developments together now this this plan may ultimately be approvable but we've kind of been put on notice of the industrial park and these residential areas in here without any benefit of knowing what mix may provide a buffer uh, around those areas and uh, the fact that the, the planning department has just late this week received an update I, I believe it would be with the questions that have been asked at the packet meeting and others that it'd be fair to maybe give this some additional time for some consideration uh, to, to put s some of these questions to, to rest uh, and in light of that I'd uh, I'd move that we postpone any action on item 8 until our next regular meeting I'd second that motion um, for all the reasons that uh, was just stated, but I think we'd like to, we'd like to see the, the the roadway resolved. And secondly, I'd like to have a better idea of what's going to be south of the property relative to the kind of mixed use status, um, particularly since this is not by right. So I think we we deserve to see what's what's being planned um, planned there as well. Okay, you authorized representative. Mm -hmm. I'm here for the Phillips family. I'm representing the Phillips family. You got a motion and a second on the floor. Mm. Did you close the public? I never hearing? did. Okay. 
Mac, I apologize. Were you asking me a question? No, I never closed the public hearing, so. so go ahead. And, and, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yes. Alice no. represents the owner. Yeah, the owners yeah, of the property. Um, Lee Alice Johnson, and I'm representing the Phillips family tonight. Um, a, a couple of things to to that, and I think certainly Josh is intending to work with the city to get the right of way um, addressed. The city, uh, the Phillips are not developing this property. They um, have had this property listed now for some time with the intent of selling and letting others develop. Um, they uh, just sold a piece of property uh, two weeks ago to South College Vet Clinic that will be coming on the south side of the road. Um, a good portion of that south side is all wet, so there's limited use there, so, but their intention is to sell off you know, five, ten acre parcels for also office and commercial use. Um, but there is no overall master plan, again, because they are they are not developers of this property. Um, and I correct me if I'm wrong, there's no requirement for them to uh, present a master plan. Um, and, and so what you'll be presented with are those uses that fall under CDZ, CDD by um, individual applicants. But this is conditional use, is it not? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. I do apologize. If we don't have anybody else for the public hearing, I will close that at this time. We do have a motion and a second on the table. Well, I appreciate her comments, but on the other hand, we've got to think about, you know, the quality development, the type of development, and I think since we don't, I'm just not, I'm not necessarily against it, but I'd like to see more information before I vote for it. I, I like to go on the record to, I, I don't really see anything wrong with this project at all, except, um, but, you know, out of respect for my fellow colleagues here, I mean, if they, if they want more time to, to study it, and, you know, I, I don't have a strong objection with that, but I don't see what would, what would change per se, but that's just my opinion. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in, in favor by saying aye. 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 All opposed. So it's tabled to a date tabled. certain, right? It's postponed. Yeah. Not to be picky, That's but right. Robert's you're Rules right. of Order right. has changed right. the verbiage, right. and yes, you're right. the verbiage. we're trying to so stay updated, too. We so are. Postponed post 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 to the next meeting. Postponing, postponed to date certain. Which would be April 11th. April, postponed to April 11th. Um, can we clarify exactly what they want to see? Yeah. If you want to see something different, what what are you looking for um, differently? Again, well, it, it's a mixed use. The zoning ordinance calls for it to be mixed use, and this is not. So we want to have some sense of what the future of all that property is going to be. Because I mean, I realize most of that's wet, but we could come in. You could come in six months from now with a series of townhouses facing that, which would not then meet the. Uh, would not uh, align with the comprehensive plan. I was going to say it's comprehensive plan, not zoning, right? Yeah, comprehensive yeah it's comprehensive plan. So I think we'd have, like to have a better idea of how the property owners see developing or selling the remaining property to what kinds of uses. You know, if, if you say we're going to sell it to housing development, I think we would not, we'd be opposed to that, for example. So we want I, some I think assurance. price is going to dictate that it's not going to be sold for single family or townhouse. No. Development. So, but but in terms of presenting something that has that you can rely on, the market's going to determine what goes there, not not the family. So, I mean, we're happy to help any way we can. I I just don't want to mislead you that what we'll be presenting is absolutely going to happen. We understand, and it's subject to change. But we can just do our best at the time, and then review things as they come to us. And, and the market will condition it a whole lot with the commission's approval. Now, my concern, primarily, I've got several, but primarily is the location of Downs Way because it's going to affect this gentleman's property right here considerably. And I think we, we all need to know that from a long-range standpoint, and it's not anything new. Sure. The, the yeah. engineers have... And has talked with the owner, I think, on several occasions right. about that. We just like to get that defined a little bit better. I appreciate that the 
developers tried to do that in this short time frame, but it, but it's just too short to get an adequate review, I feel like. And I would say work with the city staff. I mean, I realize much of the property on the south side is not developable because of wetland and also some terrain issues, but work with them to talk to at least give us some sense of how much of that property is potentially developable sure. uh, and so forth. Okay, thank you. I feel, I feel pretty confident that the staff can work with with both sides of the the developers and the property owners. And I just think there are too many unknowns right now to approve it. And be ready for the April 11th meeting. Okay. So the motion moves forward, date certain April, what was the date? 11th. 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 April 11th. All right, we will move on to item agenda number nine, Don Allen Warehouse conditional use. Ms. Robeson, please present. Uh, this is a request from uh, Don Allen Development, uh, recommendation to City Council for conditional use approval for a commercial support use, um, in particular a warehouse use. The, I'm sorry, the property is zoned CDD. It com it's comprised of two lots and um, is about one and a quarter acres. The future land use for the property is uh, light industrial and it is, the use is in line with that, uh, designation. Many of the uses within the area along Mall Boulevard um, are commercial support uses. The, let's go back to the site plan. <coughs> the project will be made up of, a, of an office use in the front of the building and then the warehouse space in the back. Um, I did not receive any correspondence for the case. We do recommend approval with staff comments. Uh, and the, the property owner is here, Don Allen, as well as the engineer for the project, Parker Lewis. All right, thank you. All right, would the applicant or uh, representative like to speak? I haven't seen him in a while. <laughs> Parker Lewis with Hydro Engineering Solutions. Just a couple of quick comments uh, for some clarification on the staff comments. One of the staff comments was, um, the largest shift available or working in the warehouse. This is, this is an owner-occupied uh, contractor storage warehouse, so there won't really be a, a warehouse shift. It's, I know that's a standard comment um, for warehouse projects, but the warehouse here is just their own storage. Um, we were just showing the difference between what's actual office space and what's uh, warehouse space. Uh, secondly, um, the comment about uh, cross access, we're, we're fine uh, with the cross access. We would like to uh, take the access um, between, sorry, I'm gonna point here. We'd like to take the access this way, back and forth to the corner lot. This area that goes to the eastern lot is, um, we have to meet uh, water quality requirements, so we're really needing that area to be a bioretention area for, for our water, water quality needs. And, uh, and also, I'm gonna go up to the aerial. You can see that that the lot to the east um, is actually has a driveway where they're sort of currently using it as cross access. They've got gravel parking on the on the lot that's in between us, and the gentleman that owns that uh, where that existing building here has first right of refusal, I think, on that property. And so we would just propose uh, to address that staff comment uh, in one direction to the west, as opposed to giving cross access to the east as well. Um, that doesn't really work for, for our layout and our water quality needs. I think it's probably worth noting Mall Boulevard's fairly low traffic, and I think, I think um, a combination driveway for these two lots and then a combination driveway for those two lots is probably adequate. Um, I, I could not attend packet. I believe uh, Katie mentioned that there was a question about fencing. This project will be fenced. It'll, it'll be a chain link fence with a, with a mesh uh, screen similar to what's across the street. This fence will also have some brick columns uh, uh, kind of spaced around, at least to dress up the sort of front, the front fence from, um, from Mall Boulevard. So be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. When you mention that front fence, you're talking about the fence of the, of the lot, right? Right, right. That one. Okay. Yeah, but there, there will be a fence. That, I mean, he, he, Don needs it for security purposes as well, and we'll have that mesh screen uh, in there for, for visual screening. 
All right, thank you, Mr. Lewis. Uh, ag agenda item number nine does require a public hearing. If you would like to speak um, about this item at this time, please come forward. Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing and ask for uh, any comments. Promotion. Commissioners. I move approval item nine with the uh, staff comments. Uh, second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor by saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Carwell, are there any communications for the commission? No, it, it is spring break, and I would expect uh, over the next couple of weeks we will be seeing some more activity as people come back on the task force front. So keep your ear to the ground, and we'll pass along any information we think is, is relevant to you. But other than that, Enjoy the rest of your spring break. As always, thank you for your time, commissioners. Meeting adjourned. Good night. Amber, are you right? Oh,